Hello, this is Sybil Harmony, and this is a video about the stages of awakening. Are you in an awakening? What does that mean? And how do you know? So if you're watching this video, you're in awakening. We all are. Some people aren't aware that they are. That's why people, one reason people are having such a hard time. When everything is changing, we're literally shifting from one paradigm to another, there's a percent of the population that's very young souls that like if you're in kindergarten and they said it's time for high school or college, you would be like, no, you might feel like I, you don't, you might feel like people feel like they don't want things to change. Change is hard, but change can be good. And the one thing that's certain here on earth is that everything changes. So Flowing with change, allowing good change can be a really good idea, but the energy is changing anyway. Okay. So some of the ways, there's 10 ways that I'm going to give you that you can know if you're in an awakening. Okay. And um, if you're not, your heart is closed. So the centers for awakening are centers of consciousness, the heart chakra. And if your heart isn't open, you're dangerous. You can do anything to anybody and you won't feel it, okay? So is your heart open? Are you up here, which is a higher awakening, which is the third eye? Ability to be neutral, to be um, non-attachment, Buddhist say, Buddhists say. Talk about non-attachment, to be more neutral, to have a higher perspective, to see a bigger picture, Okay to see your life, to connect with spiritual energies. These centers can be open and the centers above your head. Most people are operating in their first three centers of consciousness near the lower spine, which would be the first chakra, the bottom of the tailbone, survival. Can I survive my life? Can I have, you know, am I going to be well? Am I going to be safe? Am I going to be homeless? Am I going to be, you know, uh, am I going to have enough? Uh, am I going to be, you know, alive? <laughs> you know, they're trying to survive their life. Or the second chakra, a little bit below the belly button, which has to do with your emotions and desires, addictions, cravings, how you feel. Most people will move towards what they feel, what feels better. It could be shopping, uh, spending money, relationships, um, you know, uh, cravings, food, drinking, pills, all kinds of things. Um, and now these centers are not bad because the first center I talked about is your home, family, community, and what you have. The second center below the belly button is your emotions. Are you in play? Are you in amusement? Are you enjoying your life? Are you having good feelings? Um, you know, are you creative? Are you romantic? So there can be good feelings there. And then the third chakra above the belly button is about control. Are you manipulative? Are you controlling? Are you being controlled? Are you being manipulated? How is your daily life? How do you function in your daily life? Are you organized? Are Do you have clarity? Do you feel like you're on purpose? Do you feel like you're in your power? But when that center is out of balance, people are being controlled or controlling or manipulating and being manipulated, you know, um, you know, so they can, you can feel stuck. You could feel sick. You can, you know, so most people are dealing with those three levels. When you come up here and open this center, you start to awaken and do your work. And then when you come up here, so to the higher centers of consciousness, so it's like you're moving as a soul from nursery school or kindergarten, where you're learning, you know, reading, writing, walking, talking, you know, the basic things we learn here, to where you're developing as a soul, as a spirit, you're evolving and you're growing spiritually. And that happens through different lifetimes. But now it's happening very quickly in this lifetime. So people can feel like, wow, uh, what's happening? It can feel you know, like a little unsettling if you don't know what it is, but it's happening for our benefit because it's time for us to grow up. It's time for us to move to a new energy. And that, I don't make time happen. That's just the time that it is. And here on earth, we have the game of time and space. Okay. 
So what are the stages? Let's first talk about what are the stages of awakening? So most people live in third dimensional reality, which is competition, control, manipulation, trying to survive, dog eat dog, you better get yours or they'll get you, um, you know, trying to force things, trying to, you know, <clears throat> doesn't like corporations, maybe they'll do anything just to get their way or make more profit, you know, so all this kind of like, it's you're not safe, you're afraid, you know, it's physical. You're a meat suit or what I call a mutant, a meat suit, and then you die. That's the third dimensional reality. It has wars, it has toxins, it has plagues, it has, you know, and we all live in a physical world. So we, you know, I'm not saying pretend that doesn't exist because it does, but that's only one, those are, that's a lower state of consciousness of a kind of an unevolved state where you think that everything is physical and you may be chasing after it. The person you want or love or money or success or, yeah. So, and this is different for narcissists who are here under different agreements for nar narcissists and crooks. So you're probably not that if you're watching this video, so don't worry. Um, so, the fourth dimension is of consciousness here on earth now is about your beginning to wake up. You're beginning to understand that you are energy here in a physical form. You are not spirit having a, um, uh, you're not a body having a spiritual experience. You are spirit having a physical experience that everything is, energy and that you can manifest and create with your thoughts, your actions, and your word, that there's more to you than just the physical body. That is, you are housed in this body and you are here to learn and grow spiritually. So you may start to ask questions like, why am I here? What is my purpose? What, you know, what is this all about? Who am I? Okay. So some of the ancient Greek philosophers said, know thyself. So it's where you're starting to get to know who am I? You're learning how to manifest. You're learning that if you visualize and change your thoughts or your frequency, you can make yourself well. You can make yourself sick with stress. So third dimension kind of is aware of that a little bit. They're like, yeah, stress is not good. But in this dimension, you start to understand and all these uh dimensions or states of consciousness are benefited especially this one through prayer and meditation through spiritual work through affirmations through healing through um it, it's all part of your awakening and you start to understand that you have guides you have guardian angels that you have a higher self um that maybe you can't see it. Maybe you can, maybe your abilities start to wake up. Maybe you start to recognize, I see flashes of light or have dreams or get more connected to your feeling or your knowing. So your abilities are waking up, which is who you really are. We are meant to have our intuition and our guidance. We're all psychic. It's just that people don't understand what that is. It's been put into like, you know, by mainstream religion by the witch trials it's been put into like oh you can't be different you're weird you're psychic so <laughs> it's it's we all have thoughts and feelings we all have a gut hunch even a warrior on a battlefield feels like you know they you're 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 connecting in with your environment you're feeling things you're you know you're planning it, everybody a business deal you know, people who are successful get like a knowing or a download. You get a download. Like, I just know this is what I'm supposed to do. Or this doesn't feel right. I know it doesn't feel right here. I don't feel good here. I don't want to be here. So you're always receiving information. It's just a matter of like how you tap into that and trusting yourself and the information you're getting, which puts you in this whole journey of manifesting, awakening, developing. And so a lot of these 10 things that I'm going to share with you 
that a list you can check off may be coming up for you in the stage because a lot of us are in this fourth state of consciousness. Now, the fifth state of consciousness is where you don't need to manifest because you know you already have it. Huh? Because everything is just energy. There is no lack. There's no lack in the universe. There's no lack of love or money or time or energy. There isn't because it's all frequency. And when you connect in like that, you're able to instantly create whatever you want because you you already have it. Do you see what I'm saying? It's, it's, like, it's like you're able to, man, you're in a state of peace, a joy, a state of knowing, regardless of how the world looks outside you. Now, the third dimension and the, the fourth dimension will start to pull you down and go, oh, um, yeah, look at this, look at that. And if you buy into that, you'll start, so you can move from this higher state, slide back down into the crap of everything just by shifting your consciousness and your awareness. Sorry, my camera is doing weird stuff here. So being aware of that, hmm, I've slid back down into third or fourth because you could slide. Now, states of meditation will take you and and beautiful prayer and being in nature and having crystals or getting healings will help to bring you up to this fifth state where you can stay more often, where you're in peace, you're in alignment, you're in balance, because that's our natural state. Your natural state is the state of consciousness that we had when we were in other worlds and other times. A lot of us remember that. If you don't remember it, it's okay. You're creating it this time. And that's a lot of the reason why you came here. Like, why are you here? To grow up. Why are all these things happen happening? Everything is here to teach you. You're here to learn and grow up and develop spiritually and reopen your gifts and take back your power and be of service and love yourself and others. So that's these centers here, okay, and above, okay? Service is way up there. Service is the highest thing you can do. All right, so now that you understand a little bit about the dimensions, and it doesn't mean that if you go into fifth dimension that you'll just be floating on the clouds and nothing will matter, and you, know, you can just say, oh, too bad for all of you. I mean, but you'll have a different state of consciousness and experience. And you'll, I mean, it's, it's something that is individual to you and you'll have to experience for yourself, okay? But we still need to act as if the third world is, third dimensional reality is real because we live in physical bodies and because a lot of people are still there. But the more of us who move into fourth and fifth, the better state the world will be in. And that's why they don't want you woke <laughs> because then they can control you with fear, make wars, have, you know, they can. So imagine if everyone's heart would open, there'd be no disease. The oceans would purify. I have things moving around here. Uh, they want me to talk about the environment. Yeah. So being in fourth or fifth dimension is really connecting with our spirit, with our earth, with our planet with the environment as well, okay? That's why a lot of young people are, you know, and it's easier when you're younger to wake up because there can be a physical component. So you can do, have an awakening that's more just here, that's more like a shift. And when you open your heart, you may cry because you, that whatever you closed it for, the pain that you closed your heart off to, um, that hurt whatever hurts you will come up to be released and healed. So no, that can happen. And you can have a really mild, happy, peaceful awakening if that's what you're ready for, or if you're ready for the deeper clearing, if you're a shaman or a healer, you may have a very deep uh, experience like I did, but not everybody's going to have that. If you're, that's not your agreement to be a healer or a reader or a, you know, if you're not set, if you you haven't agreed to that, that's not going to happen to you without you wanting it. But if if you are, because I'm here setting the energy for people who come behind me, 
okay? And there are people before me who set the energy for the people for, for me now, okay? But there are physical components to it. So let's look at some of the uh, signs that you are awakening. First of all, you're watching this, but I did not, I didn't list that as one. Number one, you're seeing numbers. You're seeing numbers, animals and birds come close to you, babies smile at you. You're seeing numbers. Numbers have meanings like fours are angels, ones are thoughts. Um, so 12 is the change is it's like an ending. 11 is you're right before the change, okay? So any uh, two is having faith. So when you're seeing numbers, it's a way you're starting to get connections from your guides. You're starting to have aha moments. You're starting to tap into your intuition more. You're, you may um, be wanting to get healings or clarity. Um, so, but seeing numbers, having animals or birds come close to you, um, noticing, you know, getting repetitious thoughts of, um, you know, you could even feel a, like you're being touched or hugged when you meditate. And like I said, meditation and prayer will enhance these and bring them to you quicker. Okay. So check out my meditation classes, my healing with the guides and angels classes coming up. Like there's a class next Saturday. Um, I think it's the second or the third of November. It's the second. Um, so number two, change in your diet. You may feel like you want lighter foods, more alive foods, not foods that have a lot of chemicals or sugar in them. You may, some people feel like they want to be more uh, vegetarian or vegan. So, um, but change in your diet, a craving for, or a, a knowing that you need to start having a more nutrient rich diet. Um, so that can be part of it. Uh, body number three, body changes. You may have digestion issues. You may have body pain, aches and pains that are not explained, um, that seem to come and go can be, you know, if you're having that, you might want to check with your healthcare provider, but know that, um, people usually have body, physical body changes, digestion, and that's related to diet. You may feel like I shouldn't be eating wheat anymore. I shouldn't be eating sugar anymore, or dairy or whatever is affecting you. So as your body shifts into a higher vibration, it's wanting more nutrient rich foods, or you may be aware of allergies or sensitivities that no, don't no longer work for you. I'm not saying everybody should be a vegetarian. I am not saying that. Some people do very well on a paleo diet, okay? Especially older souls, or if you are type um, O blood, you're hunter-gatherer. And so I suggest praying over your food, okay? Um, but digestive issues, body changes, aches and pains. So what's literally happening is the kundalini is coming up and weaving around your chakras and bringing your energy up. Okay, so I had an intense experience with that doing kundalini yoga, which I you can do carefully, but I did extreme yoga and really it's not a good idea to force things to happen because especially but I'm that's part of my life path and my agreement to be here as a healer to experience the most light and the most kundalini energy coming up so that I can assist others and be in my more awakened state. So the goal is to be fully awake and conscious in every part of your body. And we'll talk more about that when we are talking about grounding. So number four, affecting your sleep. You may be woken up in the middle of the night as your body is going through these changes and the planet is going through shifts. There's also solar flares, planetary, astrological aspects affecting you. Full moons make it harder for me to sleep, which when you're going through an awakening process, I get woken up at four, sometimes three in the morning, and I sit and meditate, and then I go back to sleep. So I can get 10 hours of sleep, 
but my schedule is set up because I'm in alignment and I work for myself. I don't have an alarm clock because I've set up my life like that. I turned my will and my life over to the care of creator source years ago and created a life where I don't have an alarm clock. Okay. But sleep is, is one of the ways that when you're going through an awakening, your body is going through deep shifts consciously and energetically you are um, releasing old patterns. And so this can wake you up. It's also a time when your guides want to connect with you and give you messages. So it's a great time to meditate at that time. If that doesn't work for you, uh, I mean, there are different things you can do to learn the sutras I'm teaching this weekend or learn and learn how to meditate because 20 minutes of meditation is like two hours of sleep. Sometimes I don't need more than four to six hours of sleep. I just, cause I meditate. So there are things you can do, but you may also want to start going to sleep earlier if you're waking up and play with the energy of sleep. And there's a whole healing process that I do with people who are, if you're having other sleep issues. So getting into theta and, and uh, delta, which are more, um, sleep states and not being so much in alpha and beta, which are more awake and aware states. We can do sleep healings. Also, where are you going spiritually when you sleep? Uh, are you going to places where you're having dreams and healings? Or are you going and working on the astral plane? Some A lot of souls do that. And so they wake up tired. So are you eating before bed? Are you sleeping in a quiet room with no lights? Um, is your feng shui, I'm doing a feng shui video uh, with Donna in a couple of weeks on my channel. So check that out so that your bedroom is peaceful and restful. So sleep is very important. And um, there's a, that's a whole video onto itself, but it, awakening can affect your sleep. Number five, dreams. Are you having, uh, some people don't remember their dreams. I talk about in my book and other videos about, I just did a video, well, I don't think that's still up, uh, but getting messages. You can ask to have a message or visit guides in dreams. You can ask to have an answer and then look up, uh, what does it mean? Google, what does it mean? And ask your guides, show me, what does it mean if this happened? You may get a feeling about the dream. The dream could be predictive. The dream could be a visit from spirit or a deceased relatives. So connecting with your dreams and receiving messages with dreams is part of, now you may not have all of these, some people don't remember their dreams, but you may, as you continue to wake up, start to remember your dreams. Um, and there are things you can do, just simply having that intention, I wish to remember my dreams. And then the second you wake up, start thinking about it or writing it down, keep a pen and paper by your table because you'll be getting, if, if you go into the other states of, beta and alpha you'll be awake and you'll be in a different state of consciousness and you'll forget the dream okay so to remember your dreams first thing you wake up check into the dream maybe write it down okay um number six your psychic abilities are opening and we talked about this earlier so you're starting to be more in touch with how you feel you're starting to be um you know more grounded you may want to, and I didn't mention that when you're having physical and body changes and, you know, you may want to connect more with nature. You may want to stand on the earth. You may want to listen to my grounding videos and take some of my classes and find out how to get more grounded. Because when you're awakening, you really need to be grounded. Stand on the earth, breathe, have grounding crystals. Obsidian is grounding. Some people like, um, uh, Mm, this one, uh, amethyst, which name really literally means sobriety. Emotionally, see, it's a heart shaped, emotionally sober. You may want to be grounded. Your psychic abilities, your thoughts you are more open. You may start receiving downloads, or you may start playing with the idea of creating a parking spot, or imagining more money in your bank account, or a better job, or a better future. You may um, 
have feelings connecting you with people, places, and things that feel really good. You may um, feel like some places and people you don't want to be around. So you're connecting more with your feelings and your thoughts, which is all about your psychic ability. That's your personal power. You may start to see in your dreams more, to see flashes of light, to visualize in your mind's eye when you ask something or to hear a song and get a chill or to hear a message when you're meditating. All these abilities are your natural God-given abilities that we have been disempowered from. Because if you don't know the truth from a lie, if you don't know um, how you feel or what you think about things, you can easily be controlled with fear. And that's why uh, religion and government, oh no, don't, don't be in power. We, we have the power. That's what you need when you're a small child, when you're a very long, young soul, you need someone to be there to control you and set the rules. Now, as you get older, you may want to guide or guide your teachers. Um, and a lot of people seek those out and that's fine because you want someone to guide you through. It's hard for us to read ourselves or to validate our own abilities sometimes because we're not neutral to ourselves. So that's why you want to come up here, get more neutral. When you meditate, you get more neutral to yourself. Okay. So it's it's not about always being right. It's not about knowing what, like if I, you're psychic, what did I have for breakfast? It's not about that. It's about receiving higher guidance. Like what are the messages? What are the thoughts? And if you're not getting clear thoughts, you, you know, you're not getting clear downloads or visions. If your life is not going well, then you're probably not on your life purpose. So to get on purpose with your life is to be awakened. And sometimes you got to clean out all the crap before you can go like, oh, okay. Now I'm feeling like I'm more on track and things are going better. I'm going more into fourth and fifth dimensional reality because I've let go of a lot of the fears or the old programming or the old belief system that doesn't work for you. And it hasn't been working for a long time. But we think, oh, that's just the way it is. I'm just depressed. I just have anxiety. I need to eat loads of ice cream or take all these pills or get involved with bad relationships because I don't want to be alone or whatever, you know. So um, that leads us to seven, change in relationships. You may feel like you are setting boundaries with people. You're taking care of yourself more. You may feel like you want to be more of service. You may attract new friends because wherever you're vibrating in your chakras, that's who you're going to attract in. If you're loving yourself, you can attract other people that love themselves. If you're more neutral to yourself and others, you can attract people in that vibration. Not a lot of people are up here, but more people, a lot of people are having their hearts open. If you have friends with heart closed hearts, you're in a dangerous place because they're, they're, they haven't done their work. It's, you know, so just be careful. You may, I'm not saying don't be friends with them, but you need to set their boundary, your boundary. Now, sometimes people can have partially open hearts. It doesn't mean they're going to be perfect if their heart is open, but they have a, a degree of mercy and compassion for other people. That's the kind of people that love you really for you and inspire you and encourage you. Those are your real friends. And so if you have friends that, diss you or put you down or disrespect you or don't value your time. Maybe you're always doing things that they're not doing for you. You have imbalances and you may want to set boundaries and you may become more aware of um, who you resonate with as far as in your marriage, in your family, in your friendships, in your work relationships. Um, okay. So setting boundaries, being aware of your interactions with others and maybe even being aware of like, yeah, I don't really like when I said that, maybe owning your stuff, maybe um, look at how are you a friend? How are you a partner? Are you allowing, letting people be who they are? Are you um, encouraging people? Are you um, letting your kids discover who they are? So the more you are awake and in a higher energy, the more you other people around you have permission. So do you need their permission to be who you are? 
Are you empowered to be who you are? Because that's the only way to be your authentic self. Who are you? Your relationship with yourself, your relationship with spirit. Isn't it time that you own yourself and don't sell yourself sharp, short or sell out because of some fear or programming or what, if, what will people think? Or I really could care less. And even my grandchildren said to me, you're not like everybody else. You're weird. People will think they're like a bunch of Capricorns, lower, you know, whatever. Sometimes they're great people. I love them. And they have a lot of really good qualities. So I'm not saying that. But I've worked really to connect. And that's part of my power is my authenticity. And it is your power too. And they're learning that too, to be who they are in their authentic power. Because that's the energy that we're in. We're no longer in everyone has to follow the king or everyone has to you know follow the church or they're going to be you know put on trial for being a witch or controlled or disenfranchised or worse or you know so that's what dictators and tyrants and you know misguided leaders do um so you you can't you know you can't don't look don't feel don't know don't know what you know don't see what you see so this is your awakening up and you're growing up spiritually. Okay. And that starts with you. And that may bring number eight, changes in careers. Do you know how many people I talk to that hate their job? They're there for the medical health payments or whatever you call it, healthcare, because um, they make more money. So corporations are changing too. Corporations and governments are going to be changing. We're in the very tiny birth canal of this new energy coming in. And the way that we have treated young people and charging them exorbitant fees for education and making it so difficult to barely able to pay rent or buy groceries by the powers that be, and is just really, and or, or even other countries, which is worse than America. Now, there's a lot of good things happening. We're making a lot of changes. There's a lot of people doing amazing things, developing things, discovering things, helping people out, healing the environment, creating better. So I'm not saying that, but everything is here to assist you. What if you had this mind state that life is conspiring to assist you and take that belief on, okay? Because we really are going into this amazing and we are in this amazing state of awakening and shifting of the energy to become a better society and a better, more compassionate, more abundant, more prosperous world. And that's what this energy is about, okay? So if you feel like that's the old energy that you're in, it may be time for you to shift and allow yourself to not be afraid and to create and to dream and to dare to be you and to dare to do what you love and to make those shifts away from these jobs that you hate that make you sick to jobs that really support you or careers that support you and validate you. Okay. Um, so that brings us to number nine, manifesting. We talked about that before, that everything is vibrating in energy and that you can attract it to you or repel it from you by how you're vibrating, by what you believe. So no more will we have those beliefs that everyone else has opportunity or power or control, but me. That's not true. That's a belief. That's a picture, an idea. It's a snapshot in time that you're sitting in. And so it's time to let go of those beliefs and to allow yourself to be in equal balance of giving and receiving. And so that you can manifest, you no longer need to manifest because it's already here. You're allowing yourself to have it. So what you have is what you allow yourself to have. And this doesn't necessarily happen. It could happen overnight. You become a millionaire, you win the lottery, but can you have it? Can you have, do you deserve it? 
or do you feel guilty? Like you shouldn't, you're taking it from someone else. You're not. The more you receive, the more you can give to others. And so manifesting and being in that vibration of light and healing. And I do those in some of my videos. I might do that in the December class, uh, manifesting and creating and calling in good energy, enough having this, how much can you have? Okay. And it may be that you need daily guidance to start. You know, what do I do today? What do I do that we're building on progress? And it may be that you make big leaps and changes. That could happen too. All right. So manifesting is like I talked about in fourth dimensional consciousness. Okay. Number 10 synchronistic events and we've talked about this with dreams and with visions and with aha moments and with having chills can you're connecting with people remember that we're making this up as we go it's like this big movie this video and we're the star in the movie so what are you making up what are you allowing how are you asking? This has to do with developing number six, when we said developing your psychic abilities, having sync or seeing numbers. Are you having synchronistic events? Will you, when you ground, and it's really important to awakening, we talked about grounding, feeling your feet and your legs, you're connected to your grounding cord and being align in alignment. And then your tenth, ninth and 10th chakra way above your head has to do with being in the right time in the right place. The 12th chakra has to do with service. The 11th chakra above your head has to do with devotion. But nine and 10 are your guides. And so how are you connecting in with your guides and having synchronistic events? Like you knew someone was going to call and then they called. You knew that was going to happen and then it happened. But this isn't about fear. So when you let go of the fear... You can actually help to create these events from happening. You can jump what we call timelines, which are where you live in different states of consciousness. And so the higher you are, the more synchronistic events you have. I was, I mean, and just for a small practical example, the other week I was going to pick up my organic dry cleaning <laughs> and I looked up and there was my grandson walking down the street, happy with his friends. And I was hoping he was having a good day. And I said some prayers for him that morning. And there I get to see him in a good space with his friends. And so that's a small synchronistic event, a bird coming close, seeing a rainbow, being at the right, hearing the right thing, asking like, are you asking for guidance? And then listening to the guidance. You can create synchronicity by asking and then listening or paying attention to spirit. And that's also done through a better connection with prayer, with energy healings, with meditation. Okay. So I would say that meditation is probably your foundation of, and, and it, of, of all of this. And if you don't want to meditate, reflect, some people are more into prayer. Prayer can be just be talking to your guides. That could work. Talk to your guides. If you're not asking them for assistance or help, they can't really interfere in your life because you have free will here. We are living in a world of free will. Okay? So I hope you found this helpful. Check out my classes on my website. Check out my membership on YouTube. I'm doing spiritual answering spiritual questions, doing healings. We're going to get grounded. We're going to connect into our awakening. And um, this, yeah. So, and subscribe to my videos. If you're watching this, it really helps put my put me out there. I just got 10,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate that. Thank you for sharing your time and letting, allowing me to be a part of your spiritual growth an awakening process. I hope this has been helpful. I'm sending you so much love. Take care. Blessings. Bye.